Hi bakers! In this video I'm going to show you how to make a classic cookie from Italy called a Florentine or a lace cookie and it's traditionally made with almonds but we're going to make it with coconut today just a little something different. Um, but these cookies are really pretty they spread out really really flat and thin and they bake and they have this like lace look to them. It's really interesting and unique and you know, it has this really awesome kind of caramel toffee flavor and this really nice crisp texture um, and they're really cool to for a plate of dessert and they're also really cool uh, just to sell as cookies. So this recipe starts off with uh, soft butter. It's really important. It's really, really soft butter, but I did not uh, soften my butter because <laughs> I was wasn't planning ahead that far and often as a pastry chef it's hard to get that far ahead. So what I'm doing right now is just with my paddle attachment I'm breaking up the butter into smaller pieces just so it's a little bit uh, easier for the machine to handle so hopefully you can see I just kind of broke it into some smaller pieces. I'm putting my paddle attachment back on and then uh, you know I'm gonna get my best friend out. Who's my best friend? Blowtorch, yeah. So very important when um, you want to soften butter with a blowtorch that you're very careful and very important when you never use a blowtorch that you're very careful. So I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna turn this knob on until I start to hear the gas and I know you can't hear it, um, but I'm doing it until I hear the gas and then I'm gonna flick the little switch in the front. I'm gonna click it and then I'm gonna say torch loudly torch and I'm gonna flick it and there we go. And then I'm gonna turn it down because it's a little high. I don't want to melt my butter too terribly or anything. And then I'm just gonna gently let that flame touch the bowl and that's gonna help soften my butter. I do wanna, oops, it went out so I can do it again. Turn it back on till I hear it, torch. Uh, make sure whenever I'm using the blow torch, I'm not putting it in anyone's face or my face or towards my hand or someone's body or anything like that. Always be really mindful when you're using blow torch because it can really hurt someone. So I'm moving it around the bowl. I don't want it to stay at one point for any period of time because then it'll just melt the butter. And I want to do it a little less than I think because I can always do a little bit more. I don't want the butter to be melty melty, but I do want it to be soft. So... Now I can turn it on high and let that all combine nice and soft. And once it's exactly what I'm looking for, like a crazy soft butter, I can go ahead and start adding the rest of my ingredients. So this cookie is a little different than the creamy method cookies we've done before. Um, so the next addition is going to be our flour and sugar. So we're not waiting for a flour towards the end, which is a little bizarre. This cookie is going to have so much sugar in it. Uh, the sugar is going to kind of prevent a lot of the gluten formation that sometimes we have in cookies. So I'm not really going to worry too much about the gluten uh, forming too much. So now we're going in with the flour and sugar. And again, I'm not really worried about gluten formation. There's so much sugar in here that it's not going to be some highly tough cookie. It's not really a big concern. So I'm going to mix this uh, on low at first. So it doesn't all poop in my face. And then once it looks like it's starting to incorporate, I can change it up to medium speed and let it combine until it looks close to cookie dough, which is where we're at right now. So now I can take a second and I'm gonna scrape my bowl to make sure it's all mixed in nice and evenly. So we don't have any butter clumps at the bottom of the bowl or anything like that. It's gonna be really important to make sure, just like every, mostly everything, right? Other than maybe Red dough is very important to scrape our bowl as we go. Make sure it's all nice and even. Then I can put it back on. And I'm going to mix it until it looks legit like a cookie dough, which doesn't take very long. You can already see it kind of forming together into bigger and bigger clumps.
All right, so now I'm going to take it off and I'm going to add my corn syrup, but I'm actually going to scale my corn syrup directly into the bowl. Corn syrup is kind of a messy thing to work with, and if you scale it into a bowl, it's hard to get it all out of. So I'm actually just directly meat and plazing it into my mixer bowl. It's just a little bit simpler. And I know there's no chemical leavener in here or anything that is making me need to be in any kind of rush. So I'm just going to, you can't really see it. It's behind the mixer, but <laughs> I teared my scale and then I weighed my corn syrup, which you can see now in the bottom <clears throat> of the bowl. And now I'm going to combine this until it creates kind of a paste look. If I tried to add the corn syrup earlier when I added the flour and the sugar, it would have gotten like a really clumpy mess. So it's really important you mix it in, the, in this order. So it doesn't take very long for that corn syrup to incorporate. It's, that's one of the reasons why it's so important to have really soft butter so that this uh, process right here incorporates really, <clears throat> this step incorporates really easily. So I'm gonna scrape the bowl again Make sure everything's nice and even and homogenous, one homogenous mixture, very important so that all of our lace cookies look the same. And this doesn't look like a huge amount of dough, but it actually makes pretty, pretty big amount of cookies and garnish, just depending on the size of uh, cookie you're going to use, it can make a decent amount of garnish, which is pretty cool. So now we're going to go in with our coconut. And again, traditionally this is made with almonds, like really thinly sliced almonds, but we're going to do coconut just because it's a little different. Almonds are a little trickier because they, because they're so thin, they're a little brittle. And as you turn the mixer on in this step, they'll break. So you may need to mix them by hand or be just really cautious when you're using the paddle, but the coconut is flexible. So it's not going to break. So I don't really have to worry too much about it as I mix it together not going to be a big issue. You can use a lot of different mix-ins, something that's not going to melt. So you wouldn't want to use chocolate in here, but you could use any kind of other nut. You can use um, dried fruit, something like that. But you also want it to be kind of small. And at this point, this dough is all done. So I can just scrape my paddle, uh, scrape down, make sure it looks all mixed in. But it's pretty much done. It is soft because of all that corn syrup. And we're going to have to roll it into little balls before we bake it. So it's going to be really helpful to chill this down. So we can chill it for a couple of hours until it's firm. Or if we plan ahead, which I did, uh, we'll chill it overnight so that it is ready to go. And this dough freezes really well. So you could have this, um, you can even like make this into kind of a log and freeze it. And then just slice off when you need it. That's a really uh, nice tip. But it's ready to go, and then I'll show you how to bake it and shape it. All right, so our coconut leaf cookies have chilled overnight, so the dough is nice and firm. So I'm going to go ahead and bake some off to show you what that looks like. They don't take very long to bake, so I'm going to start by getting a small amount from the roll it into a ball. I could use a cookie scoop for this, but I don't have... Um, I have a cookie scoop here that's small enough for what I want. I could take maybe a purple scoop and then cut it in half. But I'm just going to eyeball it for today. And remember, the cool thing about these cookies is that you can bend them. So while they're hot, you can bend them in shapes. But that means that you don't want you know, too much ready at one given time because uh, what will happen is they'll cool and once they're cool you can't bend them anymore so i probably can boil three maybe like even up to seven um, but i want to show you a couple different shapes so i'm only going to do three at a time but i'm going to go ahead and get these in the oven you need to wash them incredibly carefully because they go really really fast from um perfect to almost done so i did a little ball and then i, I usually give them a little squoosh it helps them bake a little bit more evenly. You'll, you'll see these actually spread out a lot more than you think. They're going to get completely flat. So I'm going to get these in. Um, and then I'm going to get my, while these are baking, I'm going to get my station set up. So I can show you different ways that we can shape these. So while uh, I have my first batch in the oven, you want to go ahead and get your second batch ready. Um, when you're making these, typically you'll want to you'll do them all the same, so you'll kind of already have the same setup, but you want to kind of put them in waves. You don't want to like wait till one kept cool 
or come out of the oven before you put the next ones in. So you just want to stagger them. So the ones that have been in the oven for about two minutes, um, which will give you enough time to shape those. So I'll get these ready. Um, but I'm going to do these in a little bit of a different shape. So I took my, my ball and I've turned it into more of a log uh, just to show you something a little bit different you can do with these. So I'm going to get these in the oven. Uh, but we're going to look at the ones I made into a ball first. Okay, so our coconut cookies, lace cookies that come out of the oven and they're hot right now. Hopefully you can see kind of like the lace pattern that they've created. So we need to work with them when they're hot, but right out of the oven, they're a little too hot. So you can see I kind of try to pick it up. It's like a little groovy. Got to be like in between the hot and um, not hot. So I'm just going to wait just a second, but I, wanna, I don't want to leave. I just want to keep checking on it. So I put my sheet pan onto another sheet pan because it's straight out of the oven. I should be wearing gloves. You do want to rotate these halfway just like other cookies. So they'll make it easy. Okay, now this is perfect. I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to shape it. So for this one, I'm going to drape it over. I'm going to tin and let it kind of get a little bit of a flare. This next one, I'll do the same uh, on a smaller one, and I want to turn it upside down so that the top is facing up. So there's two different shapes. And then I can take this one and make it in kind of a bit of a taco shape. Like that. So we just need to wait for these to cool, which doesn't take long, especially once it hits cold metal. So this is already cool. Um, and you can see that I've created a bowl, which would be awesome. We could fill it with fruit or we could fill it with um, uh, ice cream, sorbet, something like that. So this one's already cool as well. They're not 100% cool, so I do like to leave them for about five minutes, but you can see just how quickly. Um, so already at this point, uh, if I try to bend these anymore, they would probably snap. Well, here's my little my little taco if I want to do something kind of like a little whimsical. So I'm gonna let these cool and then I'll show you the next batch. Alright, so this next batch is out of the oven and it's actually a really great example of why you need to rotate. Because uh this was to talk to me so I didn't get to rotate it when I needed to, and you can see that this one was in the back. Ooh, this one was in the back, so it's a little over. Um, and this one's probably a little bit closer, right? So I'm going to pick this one up while it's hot, very hot, and I'm actually going to cut it. And it's going to give me some really uh, kind of clean lines. Of so maybe I'll cut this one into a triangle. And then I can take it with my rolling clip pin, put it underneath, and let it curl over. Okay, so that's something we can do. Um, we can take the next one and we can cut it quickly into strips. So this one looks like I'll get about two. And we can do the same kind of thing. Thing too about is when you overcook these, so this one is a little over, uh, it also is more likely to break. So you have to be even a little bit more careful. So we can do like that. Not. Yeah, this one's a little over. So I'll have to show you the other one. I'll have to bake one more off for you. I just want to show you one more shape. But clearly, you can see you can have uh, a lot of creativity with this. Okay, so here's the last one I wanted to show you. Let's see if I can get this one. About ready. Okay, you gotta be careful if you pull them off too early. They will tear. Cut another long strip. Take a spoon handle. Create a spiral and I'm oops. 
I did it out of screen, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I'm just, I just wrapped it around my spoon handle and then I just kind of held my hand on it, which yes, it's hot, um, but it's not too bad. Let that cool. And it's just about cool, so you can already see that it's kind of holding its shape. So if I pull it off, I get a spiral. So that's just one more way. And this is not all the ways, these are just the ways that I wanted to show you. There's like a thousand things you can do. Um, another thing you can do is just leave it flat. That's how they're traditionally served. These are flat and they're usually either drizzled in chocolate or dipped in chocolate. Or you can take the, oh, these are little pot. You can take them and just kind of make shards if you wanted to and have little shard pieces that are more a little bit abstract. You can do that. Um, but yeah, guys, when it Lots of ways to be creative with the lace cookies. So I hope that kind of got your creative juices flowing as to some ideas of what you can do for your plate up. So here's just a quick review of all the shapes we made. <clears throat> so here is one of the cups. This is the one we made with the kind of larger tart mold. It's like a short version of a muffin pan. Here's the one we did with the smaller one. Again, kind of the same idea. We using the cup to kind of fill up with mousse or fruit or ice cream or whatever. Here's our little taco guy, which you can make a really kind of fun whimsical thing. You could pipe mousse into it. You could le legit make kind of like a dessert taco with it if you wanted to. Um, make like a strawberry salsa and some stuff like that. Have fun with that. These were just our shards, so you could like stick this into a dessert just to give it a little bit of height. Um, the shards are kind of nice just because they're uh, way less labor intensive than some of the shapes. Um, these two here wrapped around a rolling pin and they have a flat bottom so you could put them flat on the plate and then have the dessert kind of sit right here so it cups up under from underneath the dessert and comes over so that's the same thing with this one so the dessert could be right here and it kind of comes up and over uh, and then this is our our little spiral so yeah that's again just a couple ideas you could do with just a thousand things of this uh, but i just want to give you kind of an idea of some things you with some lace cookies to bring some really cool uh, interest to your dessert.